here? It's Nancy Drew. Oh, Francine, dear, I'm so glad you called. I've been having the most infuriating problem with my internet. This is Nancy Drew. Oh, you young people are so refreshing, always in search of new identities. The problem is that I downloaded this program called Weather Monkey. At my age, it's important that I keep abreast of all meteorological developments. But now I'm starting a new book, and I can't focus on my work because the Weather Monkey keeps yelling the weather at me. Maybe you should uninstall it? I will do no such thing. That would be tantamount to murder. <sighs> Maybe turn it down? Brilliant and fantastic. Oh, yes, Samantha, you are a ticket. I would love to help you, but uh, how do I know you again? Nancy, Drew, we've met a few times. Aha, now I remember you. If life were a good book, you'd be my favorite reoccurring character. I'm in Egypt, and I need your help. Egypt? Well, why didn't you say that instead of chattering away about my internet problems? I don't know how to respond to that. I read your book, and I thought maybe you could help. You found my book while you were in Egypt. <gasps> the serendipity is as delectable as Chateaubriand smothered in lavender lemon juice. I am at your disposal. I didn't exactly find it. You sent it to me. You even signed it. Oh dear, I sign and send lots of things. What do you know about Nefertari? <gasps> ah, a love story. I'll break out the tissue papyrus because when I'm done there won't be a dry Horus in the house. Uh, what? Look it up, dear. Ramses the Second and Nefertari shared a love so vast the world could scarcely contain it. I'm talking about the kind of love you spell capital L, capital O, heart instead of a V, capital E. They stood side by side and ruled the world, but as they saw the years stretch out before them, they were keenly aware that a handful of decades would never cut it. They needed to be together always. That's sweet. And relevant. The ancient Egyptians believed that life was little more than a dress rehearsal for eternity. I found records that they concocted a plan to be together forever, side by side. Why not be buried side by side? They foresaw a volatile future for their kingdom, and they were correct. They knew they would have to enact safeguards. That's why in 1904, when QV-66, the so-called Tomb of Nefertari, was found, her body was not there. What are the chances we found Nefertari's tomb? If I were a gambling Hotchkiss, I'd say 60-40. Have you heard of an expedition that went off in search of Nefertari years ago? Oh, yes. The team in which everyone died, is that the one? Yes. Do you think that story is true? Oh, heavens, yes. It's deadly out there in the desert. Think about it. You're going out there in search of dead bodies. There must be a reason they're in favor of the area. But this expedition wasn't searching for QV-66, right? Indeed not. That had already been discovered. They were searching for Nefertari's mummy. What do you think happened to them? Oh, it's best you not concern yourself about that now, given your current location. I still don't get all this business with QV-66. Why build a fake tomb? For the same reason I never carry my passport in my purse when I travel. Some things are too valuable to leave in a tempting place. You mentioned an expedition that found QV-66, Nefertari's tomb. It was one of the most significant finds in archaeology. They call it the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. It's where my fascination with the royalty of Egypt was born. The color alone took my breath away. 
We think of ancient Egypt as being a subdued sand color, but it was a riotous display with all the visual delights of a midsummer gelato shop cooler case. And you don't think Nefertari was entombed there? They only found kneecaps, which supposedly means that her tomb was robbed. You disagree? I do. What good is the mummy without the context? It's the placement in the tomb that makes the mummy valuable. Why is Nefertari so important? There are two queens I find most fascinating in ancient Egypt, and for exactly the same reason. They were hidden. Hatshepsut is the first. I think I've heard of her. She was the pharaoh that was almost removed from the historical record, right? Exactly! Twenty some years of peace and stability, and after she dies, that most the thirds, ancient cronies try to erase her from the record. Why? Jealousy, revenge, fear that his reign would never equal hers. You name it, but you can't keep a good woman down. Despite the efforts of Thutmose III's supporters, her legacy endured. And Nefertari? In my opinion, she's the opposite. She was obsessively preserved in the historical record, but it was her tomb that was hidden. Have you heard of Abdullah? Yes, yes I have. He is December on my Men of Archaeology calendar. You're kidding me. Does that exist? It existed the second I made it. Is he there with you? Yes. He seems full of himself. He is. Oh, I am not an advocate of pulpy romance novels. But if I were, I'd call that an archibald trait. In chapter one, he'd swagger into the excavation site, the picture of a rascal with his dusty leather jacket and decidedly European haircut, his cocky ne'er-do-well smirk displaying his perfectly white teeth, but by the end he'd be sweetly holding flowers and saying, Professor Hotchkiss, I'm dying to discuss your latest publication. A colleague of mine has guilted me into editing her latest romance novel, and I must confess I cannot wait until the project is completed. Reading page after page is absolutely wreaking havoc on my metaphors. Anyway, what were we talking about? I no longer know. Abdullah, that's what. He's a cold-blooded hotshot with only one setting. Success. Oh, sorry. I've also been helping my nephew break into the movie trailer business. Oh, Hotchkiss, why must you always burn the candle at both ends? He's a good archaeologist who knows Egypt inside and out. He could teach you a thing or two, just don't pick up the attitude. How sure are you that Nefertari's tomb was hidden? There was something strange about QV-66. I think that might be why it is off-limits to this day. It is? To you and me, at the very least. There is a rumor that the tomb has a clue to the true location of Nefertari's mummy. Really? Who knows? I'll tell you this. I didn't have time to read all of the hieroglyphs, but I noticed that the syntax was a little, shall we say, wonky? I don't know how hieroglyph syntax could be non-wonky. True, but it was almost as if Nefertari and Ramses II had their own language. I need your help. The hieroglyphs here don't make sense. Then you are in for a treat. I like my puzzles as tempting as the gooseberry pie from San Rios in Little Brazil, and as complex as the ginger lime sauce they lovingly smother it in. You should focus on what doesn't make sense. Look for a part of the pattern that has no earthly business being there. I'll let you go. Bye, dear. That's done. Hi, Bess. Nancy, how goes the old mummy hunt? Good, I think. Maybe bad. Something happened, didn't it? There was a sandstorm, and the professor from Kingston had to be taken to the hospital. Nancy, be careful out there. It sounds dangerous. I will. George is all wrapped up in that new job of hers, but you can call me anytime you need help. Full disclosure, while I do play an Egyptologist on television, 
I have no idea what I'm talking about. We found the tomb! Way to go! But when I opened it, two strangers showed up. Really? Aren't you in the middle of nowhere? Yes. Okay, so maybe they were just out for a walk. In the desert. Nope. Doesn't work out. Nancy, what the craziness is happening out there? No clue. It's like I'm the only one here who doesn't know what's really going on. I don't like that feeling. You get used to it. Bess. Well, it certainly feels that way. Maybe it's time to call this one a wrap. I can't until John's back. I just need to keep my head on straight and try to keep the site in order. That's exactly like this one part of Revenge of the Desert Queen. So everybody... Is this going to be an anecdote where someone dies in a cursed tomb? No. Okay, continue. I lied, it was. But I'll just keep it to myself. Lily seems very uptight. Do you think she's hiding something? No doubt about it. I just don't know if it's relevant. Strange behavior is rarely irrelevant, especially in a group that isolated. <laughs> Good point. I'd better get going. See ya! Hi. Lily seemed upset about me doing any work here. <laughs> Show me a PhD student who isn't upset about something, and I'll build you your very own pyramid. Why would she want to keep me away from your work? I have no clue. If she wants to play at being in charge, let her. It'll save you a lot of headaches. Abdullah seems confused by the hieroglyphs in the tomb. Really? You sound surprised. <laughs> Astonished. Dumbfounded with a twist of smug thrown in to soothe my ego. So, if he's confused... Then it is confusing. He's one of the brightest minds in the field. If he's stumped, something unique is going on here. What do you know about Abdullah? Mm, he's almost as brilliant as he thinks he is. He seems a little full of himself. <laughs> a little. With that amount of swagger, you'd think he invented sand. Do you think he's behind your attack? I don't think so. This isn't the first time we've butted heads. I'd think that if he were to attack me, he wouldn't sneak up from behind. How's the recovery coming? Good. I am at the point where watching television is tedious again, so that's a good sign. TV is very frustrating for the solution-oriented personality. I don't think I've heard that before. It's true. I find myself yelling, test your hypothesis before acting on it, at all of the sitcoms. Truthfully, I'm still feeling a little woozy. As soon as I can stand without feeling dizzy, I am on my way back to the site. Even if I have to sneak out of here. What do you know about Lily? Not much. She's with Abdullah's team. It's just... Strange that she's out there. Why? I never say a critical word about a student, but uh, the archaeology community is small, people talk. <laughs> I guess all I'm going to say is it's surprising Adela put her on his team. You can't just leave it at that. The curiosity center of my brain is going to go into full meltdown. I can't, Nancy. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to talk about it. I better get going. Bye. Thank you for calling Spide. Tickets for the next lecture by Sunny Dune are now on sale. All galactic currencies accepted. No materializing in the lobby, please.